So as we said, RCNN has several problems. The first one is that it's actually a multi-stage pipeline. The training is very complex and it takes a lot of time to train it. And the second is that it also um, consumes a lot of space. We need a lot of hard space in order to be able to, to train it. And even then it takes almost two and a half days of GPU time, which is usually very long if you want to have quick prototyping and see how well your model does. So even after all of these problems, what we end up with is pretty slow and takes 47 seconds per image just to run the classification part over the GPU. So what can we do to make it faster? So we can use a fast RCNN. So instead of basically extracting the features for every specific region, we can extract the features by applying the network to the entire image. And then we can take the region of interest from, that, uh, from the image that we computed and sample the feature space instead of the image space. So this allows us to take those features and normalize them into some uh, predefined size over which we can apply just a few more fully connected layers and a classifier and a bounding box regression. Finally, in the training phase, we can com combine all of these outputs to a single loss, um, adding a log loss for the classification and L2 loss for the regression, summing both of them, which allows us to train this entire model together. But the real nice thing is that actually we can derive a back propagate through this model. This way we can train this whole model together and not use the steps as before. So here you can see the comparison between FastRCN and RCNN. Basically, uh, the key difference is, as I said, we sample the features and not the image, which allows us to compute the features only once for the entire image. So how does the ROI pooling works? Basically, for a given image, we have the region of interest, which we can map to the feature, to the feature map. Then we divide this region into a grid of points, over which we, comply, we, uh, we compute a max pooling operation, which gives us the predefined feature map to continue with, on which we apply the fully connected end classification, and we can then pro back propagate through the entire network the same way that we would do with uh, regular max pooling. So the second uh, improvement, as I said, is that we can train the entire model together instead of basically fi fitting the feature extraction and only then uh, fitting SVM for each class and then fitting the bounding box regression for each class. We do that together. We do all classes together and all tasks together during the time that we learn the feature. So this method is better in almost every way. Basically, we train it very quickly and with less resources. We get even better accuracy, even though that we sampled the, uh, we shared the features. And th the inference time went from 47 seconds per image to 32 seconds. Now, while this is impressive, this is a little bit of a lie. Because basically, the test time that I mentioned doesn't include the proposals. So instead of 32, uh, 0.32 seconds, we are actually need two seconds if we include the proposals which run on the CPU, which is still impressive comparing to the 50 seconds that he took earlier. So how can we solve this issue and make this even faster? We can basically take the CNN and have it perform the proposal extraction also. So this is called faster RCNN. And in this, we basically use uh, RPN, Region Proposal Network, to run over the feature space that we already computed for that image and generate the list of proposal which we're going to use in the second stage. So how does the RPN work? Basically, it runs as a sliding window over the fe extracted features, where at each location, we're trying to predict a set of uh, K anchors. Basically, each anchor that describes a size and shape that we're looking for. And as we run it in a sliding window, it's basically testing that kind of uh, window in all location. For each such window, we compute both the classification and bounding box regression, which allows us to, to filter this window. The classification is done for 
a two classes, object or not object, and the bounding box regression predicts four uh, coordinates which allow the second stage to run on a more fine location. So instead of the very ugly pipeline that we had in the previous work, we now uh, train all of this together. So the uh, in initial training uh, in the original paper was basically much more complex than that. First, we trained the RPN over the pre-trained model, fixed that, trained the faster RCNN, fixed that, retrained the RPN, fixed that, and then trained the faster RCNN again. So as I said, this is also not as easy as it should be, but as, a, as they worked more on the method, then they were able to jointly train all of this together. So a little bit of ablation study that they did here. Basically, the test is to see how many proposals, how many anchors are needed, and they see that you need at least three scales with one ratio. Maybe in more difficult data set, they will need more. And the most important thing is that the number of proposal actually decreased. If we used a um, selective search or uh, edge boxes, we would need 2,000 boxes to be able to get good enough recall for the fast RCNN part to do its job. But since we're training the model, we're training it um, f specifically for this task of these objects, and we're using deep learning and not some classical computer vision heuristic, then the RPN can perform much better than selective search, and 300 proposals is enough. So this may means that the next stage will also be faster. So deep learning is known to be very data hungry. So they showed here that if you train on just Pascal from 2007, you get a certain accuracy. But as you add more data, you get much more higher accuracy, which raised from 68 to 78 average precision. Another method that I recommend reading about is RFCN. We'll publish the slides, which allow you to take the link. So let's talk about another method to speed up proposal. It's very simple. You don't do it. So there's no, actually no reason that we can't just take the RPN from the previous algorithm and run it alone. Instead of taking the object no object classification, we can simply replace it with a multi-class uh, classifier. And this will give us a valid object detector, which we can now use. But of course, that the accuracy of such object detector is, is less, as you can see here. And the question is why? In this, uh, in this feature, in this model, then the, all of the object, it doesn't matter which size it, it is at, run basically um, comes from the fa same feature space. So features that are good for a certain type of object, certain size, might not be as good for a different one. So basically, the solution to that is add more feature layers. We can take this feature layer and process it using a few more convolution, maybe even with a stride to reduce the, um, the size of the map, and add another classifier with, class with classification and bounding box regression. So this is called the single shot uh, multi-box detector, which basically allows us to predict for different kind of objects from different sizes at a single stage. So therefore, it is much faster than faster RCNN, which needs two stages to run. So you can see here in this example where we're looking for both the dog and the cat, that we use the different uh, feature maps to find them. We can use the finer um, feature map to find the cat, which is smaller, and the coarser feature map to find the dog. So this is the full model, basically. We take VGG and add many more layers to it. From each, we, uh, we extract the detector and get around 9,000 detection from the entire image. So why does Stride matter? Basically, we can take just the most uh, finer with lowest stride and use do detection there because we'll have a low enough stride to detect all objects. But this is not true, of course, but because that um, we'll have too many false positive. But why do we need the higher stride? Um, sorry, why do we need the smaller stride? 
This is basically to allow us to separate between objects which are very close, like this example. If we would uh, use a large stride, then we'll only have one window overlapping with both of the objects. The same is true for small objects. So they used a couple of more methods to improve the accuracy in this paper. The first one deals with the unbalance. Basically, if you look at object detection, there's a huge unbalance between positive and negative samples. You have only a couple of uh, positive images, or positive windows in the image, but you have thousands of negatives. So if you train this simply as, as it is for classification, then you'll have a problem where all the positive will be rejected. So the solution to this problem is basically to balance between them. You take, only, you take all the positive and you take three times the negative. So this way they're more balanced and you can train the classification. But then again, not all negatives are equal. Some are harder than others. Like you can see in this example, if we're looking for small vehicles, something can look more like small vehicles than others. So a better solution is basically to select those which are more difficult for the algorithm and train on that. And this is called hard negative mining. So earlier we saw that adding more data is very beneficial to the accuracy and this might not actually be enough. So what they did is they add various methods of augmentation. You can flip the image, you can stretch it, change the colors, increase it, uh, rescale it and so on. And this improves accuracy by quite a bit as we can see here, almost as much as the adding more data if not more. So another fast approach is YOLO 9000, which I again recommend. So basically we saw various kind of methods, each has their own benefits and disadvantage. And you can take each of them and try to combine it with different backbones. You can use VGG16, ResNet or MobileNet, basically to get some sort of trade-off. And each of those will get you a certain speed and certain accuracy. So how do you know how to make sense of all of these options? Thanks to Google here, we can, um, we can uh, see this. And they basically did all these experiments. Every dot on this curve is uh, an experiment that they did with different hyperparameters, different network, different algorithm. And what comes out very clearly is that SSD and YOLO are the first faster choices while faster RCNN is slower but much more accurate. So I also recommend reading this paper. They've compared a lot of other hyperparameters which you can uh, take into consideration when you're designing your own algorithm. In terms of framework, there are a few that I would recommend. If you're starting from scratch, there are great ones in CAFE, faster RCNN and SSD from the original models. And if you want something with more options, you've got TensorFlow Object Detection API, which was used to generate the figure that we saw in the previous slide. Detect one, which was usually recently released by Facebook, allows you to train their state-of-the-art algorithm. But you can basically find a fr uh, detection, object detection framework for any language or object detection framework that you would choose. As I mentioned, the network that you use also has a large effect on the accuracy and speed that you'll get, so I don't get much into that, but of course that you can try a few of them and see which works better for you. <laughs>